Today, the skies are conquered. Natural barriers no longer remain as obstacles to the free flow of people and of ideas. In the past decade, the aeroplane has been put effectively into the service of man. In 1945, when this decade began, ICAO was created because men recognized everywhere that ready and rapid communication is essential to help create and preserve friendship and understanding among the nations. To tell you of the eventful aviation development of these 10 years, here is Dr. Edward Warner, president of the ICAO Council. For 10 years, the nations of the world have worked together through ICAO to further the development of international civil aviation. Across the world, governments have cooperated to provide the services that were needed before air transport could carry its present 60 million passengers a year, flying an average of 500 miles each. The equivalent of flying every man, woman, and child in France, Belgium, and Switzerland from Geneva to London, or of carrying the combined populations of Burma, Thailand, and the Philippine Republic from Rangoon to Calcutta. The air has become a major means of world transport. The pooling of contributions from many countries has made it possible. Flight has been made safe, swift, and sure, and public confidence and appreciation have shown themselves in a steadily growing traffic. The confidence has been well earned. A mighty network of services backs it. These services begin with the careful maintenance of the airliner itself, of every nut and bolt, and every piece of equipment that goes into it. Propellers, engines, undercarriage, radio, are inspected by well-trained mechanics who know that safety in the air begins on the ground. Remember, safety of flight can depend on your competence and scrupulous attention to detail. On the ground or in the air, the airplane is never alone. The pilot flies his ship along air corridors under the continuous guidance of air traffic controllers. Aided by a far-flung network of flight information regions, and by a worldwide exchange of aeronautical information organized through ICAO. He uses thousands of air navigation services and facilities provided for him in each region of the world. Services and facilities specified by special ICAO regional air navigation meetings. Supervised and guarded at busy airports by surveillance radar, and with the vast means of modern knowledge to draw on for navigational or bad weather help. Higher and higher modern aircraft fly, and a complex network of meteorological reporting stations helps keep the pilot informed of what lies ahead of him. At floating stations in the North Atlantic, weather ships flying many flags maintain a lonely vigil. At cold, isolated locations in Greenland, Iceland, and the Faroe Islands, through ICAO, more than a dozen nations join in supporting essential air navigation services so that each year, two-thirds of a million people may fly safely and surely between the old world and the new. Radio sound balloons rise to heights of 10 or 12 miles, reporting automatically on conditions in the substratosphere. Gradually, too, we are learning about the regions high above the Earth through which the flights of the future will pass. Greater flight reliability during the last 10 years has contributed to the growing use of the air. When bad weather or difficult navigation lies ahead, navigational aids in accordance with ICAO standards are waiting. Aids to landing, such as high-intensity approach lights at airdromes. Aids for long flights over land and sea. Aids for precise navigation in areas of dense traffic. To equip the pilot with new eyes and new ears to cut through the fog and haze and darkness. The aeroplane itself has also changed greatly. 
1945, the most commonly used type carried 21 passengers about 180 miles an hour. Ten years have more than tripled capacity, more than doubled speed and operating height. Today's transports may carry 60 or 80 passengers, crews at 350 miles an hour or more. Pressurized, they climb to the smoother paths above the weather. New power plants are in use. Propeller turbine engine ships cruise the air routes, bringing new standards of comfort and quiet and smoothness. Jet transports have already flown, and their future use is sure. Helicopters, rising and descending vertically, are freeing us from dependence on large airdromes, may make aerial bus services practicable in the 10 years to come. The aeroplane and the technology that keeps it airborne have grown, and the world has shrunk in size. Across the North Polar Ice, over land and sea, over jungle, over great cities and small towns, across deserts, Everywhere the airliner penetrates, regular flights drive through the ocean of air, carrying the world's travelers, carrying the world's goods. Aircraft cross mountains and oceans with relative ease, but they must also cross international boundaries. Most of the KO's member nations now guarantee one another's aircraft free passage and the right of stopping to refuel without requiring special permission for each new route. Governments have come together through ICAO to establish uniform rules covering the responsibilities of airlines to their passengers and to the general public, and to define their legal rights. While we of ICAO are not such optimists as to suppose that passport and customs formalities will altogether disappear, they have been greatly simplified and reduced, and we count on further reductions. For 10 years now, nations have been working through ICAO to make these man-made barriers less difficult to cross. Many nations have already simplified and reduced the number of documents required of aircraft arriving from abroad. One great airline reports that the average weight of official forms carried on each aeroplane has been cut from 30 pounds to 10. Passports and baggage are examined more speedily. Air travel is quicker, pleasanter, and less costly. With more than a thousand million dollars spent on new aircraft since 1945, with the vast increase in passenger and freight traffic and the economy of the larger units, first class airfares have not risen with the rise in world prices. Tourist air services have been introduced at much lower fares still. No more is air transportation a luxury service designed only for the few. In many parts of the world, the aeroplane is the commonest means of transport carrying both man and all the physical things that go to make up his civilization. In developed parts of the world, the aeroplane is useful. In less advanced places, it is often indispensable. In countries where railroads and cross-country highways hardly exist, where natural barriers make the movement of goods and of passengers almost prohibitively difficult and expensive, the aeroplane is the answer. ICAO helps these countries by its participation in the United Nations Technical Assistance Program, helping the peoples to help themselves. Technicians have been sent to advise on the setting up of ground services necessary for safe flight. Economists teach nationals of the underdeveloped countries how air services can be run economically. Men and women go to school in the more developed countries. ICAO's technical assistance program assures a more effective use of civil aviation and at the same time fits its students for a more effective part in the world of the 1950s. The training benefits not only those who receive it, but also their fellow countrymen who, seeing what their compatriots have done, conceive a new vision of their own possibilities and set new standards for themselves. And in that way, as through its direct services to ease of travel and to the quick and easy exchange of goods, 
civil aviation can become more and more surely, and on an ever-increasing scale, the benefactor of mankind.